Following program, A Conversation with Magic, is a frank discussion of AIDS, the HIV virus, and safe sex. It is intended for shared viewing by parents and preteen children, and is not intended for children younger than eight. If you'd like to commission a knick-knack sample platter, instructions in the description below. His name says it all, Magic Johnson, and he was. Certainly Magic on the basketball court. The L.A. Lakers star kept basketball fans entertained for 12 seasons with his basketball sleight of hand and his trademark smile. Now that brilliant career is apparently being cut short. There is expected to be an announcement any time now that Magic Johnson has tested positive for the AIDS virus. Um, because of the, the HIV virus that I have, attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers uh, today. November 7th, 1991, when Irving Johnson, known on the court as Magic, told the world he had been diagnosed HIV positive and would be retiring from basketball in 1991, more than 100,000 people had already died from the disease thanks largely to a delayed response from the Reagan administration. As the disease had originally appeared in LGBTQ communities, it was seen by many in the religious conservative base as not their problem. A good thing even, the right kind of people were dying. There were high profile cases before, of course. Rock Hudson, Keith Haring, Freddie Mercury would die of the disease 17 days after Johnson's press conference. But those were queer individuals. This was the first time a heterosexual man at this level of fame had made their diagnosis known. The effects on the discourse were immediate. The very next day, calls to HIV testing centers doubled. In the following month, HIV testing rose by 60%. Perceptions were shifting, if not in helping gay and other minority communities, then at least in realizing that this was not a discriminatory disease. Johnson himself sought to become a spokesperson for HIV and AIDS awareness. Can you give us a special message over your biggest fans for the kids? Well, no question. Uh, for the kids, that's why I am going to be a spokesman for this HIV virus, because I want them to understand that uh, safe sex is the way to go. I think sometimes we think, well, only gay people can get it, only uh, well, it's not going to happen to me. And here I am saying that it can happen to anybody, even me, Magic Johnson, it can happen to. So, uh, yes, I will be going out telling them. I'll be speaking more to a lot of groups around the country about this. Among those watching the press conference was Jerry Laybourne, president of Nickelodeon. Shortly afterwards, she called up Linda Ellerby, who had been working with the channel throughout 1991 on a series of educational news specials called Nick News Special Reports, which would eventually evolve into a full-blown television show in 1992. You know, Laybourne told her, Magic Johnson says he wants to help educate kids, and since we're the kids' channel... Hi, I'm Magic Johnson. I want to talk to you about something serious. So I'm coming to Nickelodeon. Wednesday, March 25th, Magic Johnson joins Linda Ellerby on Nick's special edition, A Conversation with Magic. I'll be talking with kids about life and what it's like living with the HIV virus and stuff every kid should know about AIDS. It's Nick's special edition, A Conversation with Magic, Wednesday, March 25th at 8, 7 central. January 24th, 1992. Two and a half months after the press conference, major news outlets announced that Magic Johnson would be the focus of a half-hour special as part of Nickelodeon's Nick News series. A co-production between Linda Ellerby's Lucky Duck Productions and the Magic Johnson Foundation, and funded by both Nestle and the National Basketball Association, a conversation with Magic would see the basketball star in open, honest conversations about HIV and AIDS with a group of children between the ages of 8 and 14. The intent was to air the special five times on Nickelodeon, presented without commercials, and then provide it for schools through the Cable in the Classroom program, plus home video releases. This was not the first or only television project pitched to Johnson, but it was the only one he accepted at this time. He's had more than 200 proposals, but ours is the only one approved. This is his vehicle to speak to kids. We're proud we have this important piece of television. The special was heavily promoted in places Nickelodeon had never promoted themselves before, including NBA radio telecasts, announcements at sporting arenas, and a feature on Inside Stuff on NBC. 
The special would also air on over 95 local PBS stations, and there was even an audio version that was broadcast on the Westwood One radio network, which provided content for over 7,000 radio stations. Now, there are no players from the Orlando Magic here, but there has been plenty of Magic here in Orlando. Magic Johnson, that is. Three months ago, he announced his retirement from the NBA after testing positive for the HIV virus. But he was voted by the fans as one of the starting guards for the Western Conference stars. His presence in Orlando has been the source of much discussion, and his every move, obviously, has been well documented. February 9th, 1992. Between the filming of the special and its airing on Nickelodeon, Magic Johnson was voted in by fans to compete in the 1992 NBA All-Star Game, pulling him out of retirement as the point guard for the Western Conference. And what a night it was for Johnson. The final minutes seeing him squaring off one-on-one -on -one with Isaiah Thomas and Michael Jordan, and landing the game's final basket. Magic Johnson would walk away the game's MVP. For many, it was a statement that being HIV positive didn't necessarily prevent you from living your dreams, from excelling, that you weren't a risk to people around you even in a sweaty, locker room sharing competitive sport. And for the popular image of Magic Johnson, it was seen as a swan song, a farewell moment to one of sports greatest athletes. And then Johnson was in the Olympic Dream Team and then returned to the Los Angeles Lakers in 1996. Just can't keep him down. Nickelodeon isn't the only one touched by the magic of our very special edition, A Conversation with Magic, an extraordinary and praiseworthy half hour of public service television. Linda Ellerby should be ordained the kids' patron saint of common sense and plain talk. Four stars, a magic show. Nick's AIDS special is this year's best. There has never been a program on AIDS more critical to today's children. Be part of a very special Conversation with Magic, Tuesday on Nickelodeon. March 25th, 1992. A Conversation with Magic airs on Nickelodeon. It opens with Linda Ellerby, our moderator for the evening, explaining plainly and directly what this is all about. HIV infection is spreading. People in 157 countries have been diagnosed with AIDS, and there is no cure. You have a right to know about these things. You have a need to know. Ignorance is not bliss. You don't go to heaven if you die dumb. That's what this show is about, not being dumb. It's about AIDS, safer sex, and you. This was the power of Nick News. It never talked down to its young audience. It respected their intelligence and their agency and worked to inform them on these issues directly. Most of the time. We'll get to that. The floor is open, and kids start asking Johnson questions. A lot of the questions dealing with how to handle an HIV diagnosis on an emotional level. My, my question was, how do, you, how do you learn to, like live with it like I mean like I guess if, if I if I got HIV I'd probably be like crying and screaming all over the place but how do you learn to like you know live with it well that's most most people that's their first reaction you're, you're devastated you're upset um, but I, I think what what you have to do is that you have to understand you have it now you have to try to say to yourself okay hi how am I going to defeat it? How am I going to uh, deal with it? And first of all, you have to have a positive attitude. That's number one. Because if, you, if you're down, if you, you, you think that uh, you can't live on, then it's going to overtake you instead of you overtaking it. And then we cut to a rap song about how you can't get the disease from casual context, which is just the most 1992 thing to ever exist. How we can spread from person to person, from skin to skin, it's a joke and it hurts them. To know that we fear them when we have no reason, they're human just like us, so why do we fuss? Let's cut the nonsense and violence, take down the walls, the fence, which keeps us away from them. Time to lend the hand to your fellow man, fight for life and aids with the bad. This is what that most of the time was referring to. It's a good message, but it's one of the moments in the special where it's a little condescending, a little pandering, a little tone deaf. After the rap, the topic changes to safe sex. Well, one of the best ways, Magic, is, is wear a condom, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Uh, the safest way is to wear a condom. And uh, I think somebody brought one here. I have one show, here. Just to show you. This is what a condom looks like, guys and girls. It goes on the man's penis, and basically it goes on like this. You try to get the air out of the end part there, you roll it down the penis. 
And that protects the man when his penis is inside the woman's vagina. That protects him during sex, and it protects her. It's not 100%. The only 100% way to protect yourself for safe sex is to not have sex. That's right. So that's what you should be thinking about. The safest sex is no sex. You probably noticed the footage of this moment is a lot worse than the rest I've been showing. That's because most of that footage came from an official VHS release of this special sent out to educators. This footage, on the other hand, comes from a recording of the special's original broadcast. As you can imagine, the condom moment was contentious for these staunch, abstinence-only conservatives and pearl-clutching parents in the audience. No doubt pressure from these groups resulted in the scene's removal from later releases. And that's a shame because sex education in the United States was, and still is, woefully inadequate. The children present are asked if they know anyone with the disease. A young boy talks about his brother, how getting AIDS resulted in him losing his friends, getting excluded from neighborhood activities. And then this happens. But you can't tell by looking, can you? No. There's no way you can tell how many people sitting here are HIV positive. In a truly powerful moment, Two of the girls there discuss how being HIV positive have affected their lives, how hard it is to make friends because people don't understand the disease. You wanted to say something? That I want people to know that we're just normal people. Mm-hmm. Aw. Uh-uh. You don't have to cry. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Because we are normal people, okay? We are. You just want to be treated like that, right? You just want your friends to play with you and call you up and come by and still have sleepovers and things like that, right? Yes. And it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. That's Heidi Abrabend. She's now 38 and is an international HIV and AIDS activist. Watching this moment is hard. No child should have to feel this way. No child should be made to feel isolated and unloved and afraid for their lives. The rap was silly. The condom moment was important, but maybe a bit clumsy. But this right here is why this special is important. This is about empathy as much as it's about the facts. This special didn't change things overnight, but was instead part of a tapestry of understanding. That is, I think, the strength of Nick News, and a conversation with Magic was certainly one of its greatest moments.